Isaiah 7.14 is one of the most important Christian proof texts. For Christians, it is the basis of Jesus' mythical virgin birth. In spite of the fact that not one in a thousand Christians have the slightest idea of how to read, let alone understand biblical Hebrew, they insist that the word Alma in Isaiah 7.14 means virgin. Isaiah 7.14 reads, Lachen yiten Adunai hu lachem ot. Hine ha'alma ha'ra violetet ben, v'karat shemo Emmanuel. Therefore, the Lord of his own shall give you a sign. Behold, the alma is with child, and she shall bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. While it is clear to anyone who understands Hebrew that alma does not mean virgin, and while it is clear that the woman in verse 14 is visibly pregnant, and while it is clear that the context precludes this passage from being about Jesus, Christians slavishly hold to the fallacy that Alma means virgin. Isaiah 54.4 says, Al tir'i ki lo tevoshi, vi al tikalmi ki lo tachpiri, ki voshet al umayich tishkachi, vecherpat al munutayich lo tizkiri od. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, and not be embarrassed, for you shall not be put to shame. For the shame of your youth you shall forget, and the disgrace of your widowhood you shall no longer remember. In this verse, God is consoling Jerusalem, mentioning, among other things, the shame of your youth. The term, shame of your youth, in the original Hebrew, is voshet alumayich. Alumayich means from the time that you are an alma. Alumayich is the second person possessive form of the word alma. But what shame was there in Jerusalem's youth? Perhaps we can draw a hint from Isaiah's words from chapter 1, verse 21. Echa haita lezona kiria ne'emana. How has she become a harlot, a faithful city? Or perhaps we can draw a more definitive conclusion from Lamentations 1, verses 8 and 9. Jerusalem sinned grievously, therefore she became a wanderer. All who honored her despised her, for they have seen her nakedness. Moreover, she herself sighed and turned away. Her uncleanliness is in her skirts. She was not mindful of her end, and she fell astonishingly, with none to comfort her. Behold, O Lord, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. Or better yet, Ezekiel, verse 16, 15. And you relied on your beauty, and you went astray because of your fame. And you poured out your harlotries on every passerby. To him it would be. Ezekiel, verse 16, 20, sheds more light on the subject. Then you took your sons and your daughters that you bore for me, and you slaughtered them for them to eat. Were your harlotries a trivial matter? Verses 25 and 26. At the head of every road you built your lofty place, and you made your beauty an abomination. You spread your legs to every passerby, and you increased your harlotries. You played the harlot with the sons of Egypt, your neighbors great of flesh, and you increased your harlotry to provoke me. If that's not clear enough, how about Ezekiel 23 verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 21? Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother were they. And they played the harlot in Egypt, in their youth they played the harlot. There their bosoms were pressed, and there they squeezed their virgin breasts. And their names were Ohala the elder, and Ohaliva her sister, and they were mine, and they bore sons and daughters, and their names Samaria is Ohala, and Jerusalem is Ohaliva. And her sister Ohaliva saw that she became more corrupt than she, and in her harlotries, more than the harlotries of her sister. For the sons of Assyria she lusted, the governors and officers nearby attired in all sorts of finery, horsemen riding horses, handsome youths, all of them. And I saw that she had been defiled, they both had one way, and she increased her harlotries, and she saw men engraved on the wall, images of Chaldeans engraved with types of drawings, girded with girdles on their loins, colored hanging turbans on their heads, the appearance of mighty men, all of them, 
the likeness of the children of Babylon Chaldeans of the land of their birth, and she lusted for them at the sight, her eyes. And she sent messages to them, to the Chaldeans, and the children of Babylon came to her for a bed of love, and they defiled her with their harlotry, and she became defiled through them, and her soul was disgusted with them, and she revealed her harlotries and uncovered her nakedness, and my soul became disgusted with her, as my soul had become disgusted with her sister. And she increased her harlotries to remember the days of her youth, when she played the harlot in the land of Egypt. And she lusted for their concubinage, those whose flesh is the flesh of donkeys, and those whose issue is the issue of horses. And you remembered the lewdness of your youth, when your breasts were squeezed by Egypt because of the bosom of your youth. It is not a pretty picture. Jerusalem in her youth, in her alumayich, when she was an alma, is repeatedly referred to in the most uncomplimentary terms as a prostitute lustfully committing and searching out the most baseless of sins. Is any more proof required to demonstrate that the word alma does not mean virgin?